efficiency, when those come to us, we're just doing due diligence. So we're just reviewing, making sure that we're in agreement with the savings and you know, it complies with our program requirements. And you know, we write a grant agreement and hey, this is great. When this is installed and commissioned and verified, we'll write you a check. Um, some, some folks are less sophisticated. You know, some, some contractors are just have an idea of, hey, I think I can put a, you know, a new piece of equipment in. I know there's gonna be some energy savings there. Can you help me quantify this? Is this something that would, uh, would, would qualify for funding? In those cases, our engineers do go out, take a look at that, talk to the customer, and do some energy analysis in-house you know, to support those. So typically, if you're getting into the very large investments, uh, paid by savings contracts, performance contracts, we're doing due diligence. There's been some uh, consultants to energy modeling to develop that. The smaller projects are the ones where we, we kind of dive in and maybe do a little bit more energy analysis on it. So we kind of meet the customer where they are to help them get to that uh, next step of actually installing uh, the energy efficiency product. So the, uh, kind of what I was going to wrap up with is, you know, I had the, the win, win the care about energy efficiency. I think yeah, now's the time. Um, you know, as you know, the, the, there's been tremendous growth in the industry, uh, a lot of you know, a lot of emphasis around environmental and sustainability of the corporations and what's your carbon footprint and um, just a lot of interest around this. People see that this is uh, um, critical to, to survival in the future. And so this came out of CEE. I uh, was at the, the meeting they had in October of last year, and it was their kind of their annual report on ratepayer funded energy efficiency programs. So like I was telling you, all the incentives that PSE provides to customers is, is through a collection in, in the conservation rider. Utilities do that. Uh, do that nationwide. The, the slide I showed you earlier, here's all the member utilities in CEE. So pretty much the US and Canada is pretty well saturated uh, with ratepayer funded uh, utility efficiency programs. And here's the growth in you know, gas budgets. Gas hasn't been on, on the, uh, the rise like electric has. But you know, it's a, it's a $9.1 billion dollar industry you know, last year in ratepayer uh, funded utility energy efficiency. Back to the Desire website, this shows states that have a uh, renewable portfolio standard. So when I was talking about I-937 earlier, that's our 15% our renewable by, uh, by 2020. And then here are states that have a energy efficiency standard as well. So our all cost effective conservation, or just a color on the map here um, as well in the state of Washington. And then, um, and the blue flame or policies that include natural gas savings requirements or goals. So I think we had a question earlier about um, you know, I-937 driving PSE to, to do this. Well, you see that we don't have a, a, a blue flame in the state of Washington. So there's not a, a legislative requirement around natural gas uh, conservation programs, but we do offer natural gas conservation programs. So it is something that we realize is important to helping us maintain Economical gas rates and conservation. Um, aging workforce, you all have probably you know, heard this. This is something that PSE is really uh, really focused on. We've got a lot of folks that have been around a, a long time, the baby boom generation is retiring, so definitely a good time to be, uh, be getting into, into this build. And um, you know, there's, there's just a lot of other uh, you know, non utility energy efficiency you know, programs out there as well. It's a lot of community efforts now. You know, we have that here. We have the 2030 district in Seattle, uh, Carbon Four Square project in Portland. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, you know, local groups. That, a lot of the ARA funding and, and the federal stimulus dollars started up a lot of those those groups. But um, you know, some of those have really developed a, a sustainable model that I think will continue forward. So there's a lot of opportunities I think to work in work in energy efficiency. And uh, what I had, Mel was asking some questions around how our programs work. So if, if you all can bear with me for just a few more minutes, I'll go ahead and, and kind of give you the, the brief rundown of what PSE offers on the, uh, the commercial industrial side. And, uh, typically, this, this is just a kind of a generic high level presentation. But I think we've already answered question number one, but this is something that, that I get asked a lot and all of our team gets asked is why are you paying me to use less of the product you sell. That just doesn't seem to make good business sense. So I always like to answer that question for folks. Um, there's still some skepticism out there. 
uh, for people, they have a hard time believing that they can put a new lighting system in their building that would use 50% of the energy that their current <coughs> lighting system uses. Um, and then I just had a uh, kind of an overview of our programs. And so this is, we talked through this earlier. I like to tell people about our integrated resource plan. And the brag of it that we've been doing energy efficiency since the 70s. And um, you know, it's definitely, it's, it's our strategy to, to keeping cost effective energy efficiency energy rates, um, energy resources in, in the Northwest. A couple of examples. So this is a uh, this is an internet call center. Uh, basically, uh, you know, folks working on the phone on their computer providing technical support. Uh, we came in and did, um, I, I can't remember, I think this was a combination lighting and a little bit of HVAC uh, work as well on a project. And um, you can see when this got implemented that we considerably dropped their uh, their energy usage, the scale doesn't go to, you know, it starts at 5,000, so you can't see the full full range of the scale, but, you know, 1,500 kilowatt hours per day savings through a simple retrofit project, and this comes out to be about uh, $45,000 a year in energy cost savings that this customer got. What was the payback I, I don't know. I, one thing to keep in mind is, Something that's, that's got that good of savings, we're, we probably funded 70% of that cost, or 50% on the lighting. So usually, we're, if we're involved in a project, we'll fund up to about a 10-year simple payback, and then by the time you apply our incentive, we're buying that down to a four to five-year simple payback uh, for the customer. This is a uh, this is a facility. It's got a, a swimming pool, it's an auditorium, and it has a gym and, and some other areas as well. And, you know, we like to go back, and I, I was talking earlier about looking around, looking for other savings opportunities. So this was, um, you know, the dark blue. This is this is that chart I was showing you earlier, average outdoor air temperature, and this is therms per day. This is a gas example. It's almost just straight linear temperature versus energy use, and uh, this is where they were before we got uh, involved working with them. Um, the first thing we did is we, we put a high efficiency boiler in, and we got a pool cover, and. Some people may uh, may question why would you put a pool cover on an indoor pool? Um, what is the biggest energy loss from a pool? Where does the energy loss come come from? Oh, I was thinking maybe the the, uh, the temperature inside the room is higher than the pool itself, or less than. Yeah. So typically, uh, the, the room temperature, pool temperature, they're going to be pretty close. Sometimes the pool may be a little bit warmer. Um, it's evaporation. Evaporation is the biggest, it's just that. Just like when you sweat and you, you know, it cools the surface of your skin, that's continually happening in the circuit. It's that evaporation, it's the cooling effect on the pool, and you're having to put more water into the pool, and that's coming in at that groundwater temperature that we were talking about. You're having to heat that water up to an 80 degree or 85 degree, whatever the pool temperature is. Um, so you don't have to have a lot of insulation in the pool cover. It's just getting something over the, the surface to stop the evaporation gives you tremendous energy savings. So if you have an indoor pool, you definitely want to keep a pool cover on it when it's not in use. And then um, we came back after that and we did a, a BFT, pressure fit on their air handler, and it slowed down uh, basically their ventilation rates and, and airflow rates to the pool. Um, didn't need as much ventilation when that pool cover was on the pool. So you can see we've shaved off quite a bit of energy use in this facility. About 20, almost 22,000 thirds a year of natural gas savings at this facility. So I always like to let people know that this, this stuff really does work, and we're not just buying new equipment. We're, we're investing in improving energy savings for these projects. I was talking about the, you know, we have custom grants and rebates, and that's, um, I, I explained the difference in those to you. I like to talk about our programs. We have operational uh, efficiency programs as well. And then we have online tools. We, have, we try to provide some good self-service tools for people to do uh, you know, at the base level of uh, energy analysis and on their own. So commercial rebates, you know, we've, got, we've got over 100 prescriptive rebate measures. And this is when you're buying equipment that we know saves energy. If you rebuild a, a four lamp T12 to a three lamp T8 uh, fixture, we'll give you so much per fixture. Um, like I said, Variable speed drives, uh, high efficiency HPAC retrofit will pay up to uh, $550 per ton of capacity on that equipment. Do a lot of those products have LEED? Are they LEED certified? Um, 
So the question is, are those products LEED certified? And um, so I don't believe really LEED does certification of products. I think if you're talking about product certification and product efficiency, that's where you're looking at Energy Star. Um, so that would be Energy Star labeled. Um, there's probably some other certifications on that. And what we do, whenever, one, one challenge that we have um, in the request is we're not going to pay an incentive for what's required by state energy code or local or local amended code as well. So yeah, the city of Seattle has more stringent energy code requirements than, um, than the state. So lots of times, some, because something is Energy Star rated, it may it may uh, it may only just comply with energy code. Um, so that's why we use. I was talking about the CEE tier ratings. Uh, when you get in and you look at these rebates, you may see that if you want to do a high efficiency HVAC rebate, the product will need to meet a certain CEE tier two or tier three efficiency requirement that will be greater than, it, than the Energy Star requirement qualification. That would also be greater than, than state energy code requirements. And if you want to find that information, when you get on our website, uh, if you look at savings in energy center, and then uh, kind of start drilling your way down into for businesses, uh, there's, there's stuff for homes if you're interested in our residential programs. You know, we've structured this. We've started structuring this in a way to uh, to help facilities managers and owners get to the programs that are uh, most appropriate to them. So you'll see uh, hotel, motel owners, grocery, restaurant, food service. Uh, but if you just want to get the full list, the, the rebates and grants option will give you the full list of all the, all the programs that we have available. Uh, the custom grants, this is where you work with an engineer. And, and we, we come up with a, an agreement on what will the project cost, what will the energy savings be, and we run that through a funding formula. And we fund 26 per kilowatt hour up to 50% of the measure cost on lighting projects. That's per kilowatt hour of, um, per year of annual savings or first year savings. Anything non-lighting will pay 30 cents per kilowatt hour. And the reason that's different is lighting is very cost effective. Pretty much all the lighting projects have a pretty quick payback. So we don't feel a need to put as much funding into those uh, to make those palatable to customers. And then on the, the natural gas side, we'll pay $5 per therm. To 70% of the lighting costs. Uh, typical things that we're funding under are custom grants that our engineers are working on. Uh, we do lighting there, even though we have some prescriptive lighting offerings as well. Um, lighting controls, uh, bottom level stairwell lighting and garage lighting is something that's taken off. Uh, people were really reluctant uh, to, to go there a few years back, but there's really good technology that uh, keeps some minimum level of lighting in your. In your low grade parking garage and in your stairwells and then when an occupant is sensed uh, the light comes on to full brightness. Um, you know, HVAC equipment controls. Um, another thing, garage, parking garages uh, with, with carbon monoxide sensors. So overnight and uh, when there's not a lot of traffic in, the, in and out of the garage, the fans shut down. So you don't need those ventilation fans that are designed, you know, for worst case uh, scenario, exhausting automobile exhaust out of a garage. Um, pretty good savings on, on those systems as well. And we also get into uh, compressed air uh, systems and other industrial uh, process modifications. D12 lighting, this is something that we're really pushing on people. Um, as you, Like I said, we don't, uh, we don't fund things that are required by code and federal efficiency standards are essentially eliminating the T12. There's, there are gonna be products out there that you can buy that, can, that comply. But um, after July 1st of uh, I think it's 14th of this year. Yeah, um, four foot linear, two foot U2 T12s, and a lot of the uh, you know the eight foot T12s and T12 HOs are are going to be going away. And once it becomes no longer becomes a, an option for you to buy that product, then we don't have a need to incent people to buy mm -hmm. a different product. So this is a message we're getting out to our customers. You've got T12s left in your building. Let us help you get rid of those while we still can. And we're even taking it a step further. We call this our whole enchilada, but um, you know, one thing we find is a lot of contractors, lighting contractors, or customers, they just kind of want to do the easy stuff. They maybe come through the building and rebuild the troppers and screw in some CFLs and can uh, fixtures, but we really want people while they're there to do a comprehensive lighting retrofit. You know, if you've got opportunities to do motion sensors and controls, uh, you've got some exterior lighting in the building or some parking lot lighting, um, 
if you're willing to take a look and do a do a full blown top to bottom lighting retrofit of everything in the building, put controls in where you can, uh, we're willing to pay you a little bit more. So we've started offering that um, you know the higher instead of 30 cents per kilowatt hour for comprehensive lighting projects. We're really trying to move people to that uh, uh, next generation of lighting efficiency uh, once we step away from funding T12 to T8 retrofit. This is an example of a, of a project where a contractor pitched it both ways to a customer. And uh, it shows that it's, it's working for us. Um, and doing the full blown lighting retrofit, getting in the exterior lighting and other stuff in the building, some controls. I got 88,000 kilowatt hours of savings versus 58,000. And um, yeah, annual cost savings, $8,600 versus $5,800. And we gave them a higher incentive. Twenty-six thousand dollars instead of just eleven thousand. It keeps their simple payback pretty much the same. Um, actually, it was a little bit less of a simple payback than they went with the enhanced lighting. So we're really trying to push people to, to get as much energy savings as they can out of the lighting retrofit. Yeah. When when you guys transition from the T12 to the T8 as a standard, kind of the baseline, um, are you guys going to be transitioning to a T5 rebate, or is that more a few years down the line? Here? Yeah. So we have you know we have T5s right now. Really, the, the surface, the you know, the intensity of a T5 is, is, is so bright. You know, sometimes it requires a special fixture, and um, you know, just to do a straight one-for-one -one retrofit or rebuilding an existing fixture, it can be a bit of a challenge to get a five T5, you know, to, to, to work well with that. So I think we're always going to have those, um, you know, those those projects where a low wattage T8, you know, maybe you can put reflectors. You can get really good efficiency out of a T8. So right now, you know, we fund both. We'll fund you to go to a T5 just like just as, just as well as we will to go to a T8. So it's really that appropriate technology. And then, you know, what we're really looking at and monitoring is what's going to happen with um, with with LEDs. There's, there's some of the linear direct replacement screw in uh, LED products that are out there. You know, if you look at your your lumens per watt in that and the cost. They're not looking real attractive right now, but I think it's going to be right around the corner until there's some kind of a panel chopper replacement you know, that will work well there. And um, you know, I think that's that's going to be the next generation uh, lighting product that we're going to. Uh, we have performance-based uh, uh, programs as well, existing building commissioning, um, really just trying to, to tune up your building, get better performance out of it. Um, it's kind of an old slide. We've, we've got two commissioning programs now. We've run what we call our building uh, energy optimization program for uh, for a few years now, and this is deep dive uh, bringing a commissioning agent on board to, to really go through and do a detailed investigation. We found some customers aren't quite ready to go there yet, so we have a simplified commissioning program now that we just started this year. And so what you'll see if you go online, I think it's already up online, and I just reviewed a draft of the new brochure yesterday. It's called building tune-up. That's really what we're pushing here: building tune-ups. And there's two options. You can do simple tune-up or you can do comprehensive commissioning. And simple tune-up is really just doing the four or five things that get you good savings. Have your service provider do, um, you know, make sure you're scheduled right, make sure you're, good, you're controlling your outside air, um, those kinds of simple options with your HVAC system uh, to, get, to, to get good, uh, good efficient energy use in both buildings. Resource Conservation Manager Program. How many of you have heard of, of this program and are, are familiar with it? So this is where we have, uh, basically we support um, an energy manager on site of the facility uh, to, to manage not just uh, electric and natural gas, but all their resources. It's really for portfolio customers, uh, large school districts, uh, city governments, county governments, and we have some large corporate campuses that are in this program as well. And this is an online, uh, kind of talking about our online tools. This is our 15 minute uh, energy intervals data that we have available to customers that are participating in our programs. This is just a really, um, really good example of what you can do with just a little bit of information. Uh, this was a school that um, had, a, had an issue with electric resistance heat coming on and off all night long. And so this is really just a controls tune-up. Um, identified this issue, uh, made some modifications in the controls, and you know, shut this building down at night. So significantly re reduced nighttime usage in the building. And then, you know, the, way, the way this was set up, you can see this is where they're sitting their peak demand. So warming the building up maybe a little bit too quick in the morning. So the next opportunity uh, from this information is 
you know, maybe we want to bring, you know, stage things on a little bit slower in the mornings, try and level off that uh, the demand a little bit and, and save a little bit on our energy bill there. But uh, you know, this is a, a very good service we provide to our customers that are in our programs. And then uh, you know, we have my PSC accounts. So this is available to our, our smaller commercial rate schedules. We can go on and do some of that uh, energy usage and weather analysis, uh, kind, of, kind of things that I was talking to you earlier about. You know, definitely pay your bill online. If you're a PSC customer and you haven't signed up for online billing, please please do that. But, uh, we, we've saved a considerable number of trees by uh, you know, offering this to our customers and encouraging them to, to do that. Energy advisors, this is something we have eight to five, uh, you know, Monday through Friday. Customers can call in and, and find out if you're having a hard time finding a, the program offering online or have a question about who, who do I need to contact regarding a specific uh, rebate for a type of technology or product. They can help you out, and um, this is a uh, this is what we have on the commercial side. There's one on the residential side as well. This is our quarterly newsletter. So if you're interested in keeping up with the programs that we have uh, going on, um, here's where you sign up for that, and you'll get a newsletter each uh, each quarter that kind of gives you some case studies of projects we've worked on, new programs we're offering, and updates on our incentives. Um, we really try to keep the the mails, the emails, messaging to about once a quarter. And then you know, we'll have a few other special events, like when we launched the Enhanced Lighting Program, we hit everybody with an announcement about that. We've got the West Coast Energy Management Congress coming up next month. We've been promoting that through a couple of additional emails. So try not to spam folks too much, but just keep them in the know on, on the programs that we offer. New construction, like I talked about, we go with anything that's above and beyond code. Uh, that's been a bit of a challenge with, um, with the ever-increasing energy code requirements. We had some really good uh, new construction offerings with the last building boom with a lot of those pro projects. Um, we're really finding it challenging uh, to find good cost effective projects that go uh, above and beyond the current uh, Washington State Energy Code. And, uh, we're working in data centers right now. Uh, we have a uh, consultant on board, Clear Result Consulting, doing some operational improvements in data centers as well as uh, you know, capital investments as well for retrofits. Starting to work in industrial systems, we have a consultant on board that's basically we're doing what's called a uh, performance tracking system. So we, we're doing sub metering or whatever we need to do to, to look at energy used per widget produced and then helping them tune up and uh, refine those manufacturing processes to make that more efficient. And we basically pay, this is a pay for performance kind of program where we'll identify opportunities for you to reduce energy usage. When that energy usage comes down, we'll pay you so much per kilowatt hour saved. And then building tune-up. This is that the commissioning light the program, the simple commissioning. And it kind of works the same way. You know, we'll baseline your building, give you some ideas of what you can do. You go in and tune it up, bring in the energy use, and we'll pay you four cents per kilowatt hour saved um, over the course of a, of a year. And so that's uh, that's our programs in a nutshell. I did bring uh, you know, some handouts that are just kind of a comprehensive overview. We, we'd like to point people to the website because that's where we, you can always have the, uh, the most up-to-date information. Seems like anytime we print a brochure, by the time we get it out and circulate it, you know, we've, we've got a new rebate we're offering and we've made a change. Uh, but I do have some materials that we'd like to put today. 